Let's talk plans, y'all. <laughs> hey everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on Floss 2. I am coming to you on this Friday, August 30th, 2019 with a Floss Tube Extra. This is a planning video for mostly September, but a little bit of October talk here um, because we've got some events that are kicking off on September 1st and some of them kind of extend into October. Um, so in the videos past, I have talked about the fact that when these events drop, I was immediately going to work on my plan and then come to you guys and share with you what my plans were. Um, some of this is, I know that some of y'all are curious to see what I'm doing for these, and some are also maybe looking for ideas. Uh, maybe some of these tasks are stumping you, and so um, perhaps the way that I have approached them will help you figure out what you're going to work on for them. So we're going to talk about September, October, and WIPGO. Uh, we are going to talk about my September plans, so what I intend on doing. Um, in the month of September. We are also going to talk about the School of Magical Stitches um, stitching extra credit for the months of September and October as well as the reading extra credit. And then on September 1st there is also the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch September Acrostic. Um, and so <laughs> we got a whole bunch of things that I'm going to be telling you guys about. I have all of these events right here in front of me. Um, I do not have all of the projects for each of these. So what I'm gonna do instead is in, insert some pictures um, so that you guys know what I'm working on for these various things. Um, but um, I didn't bring all of the projects because there's no sense in it. Uh, some of them I may not get to until the end of October. I just figure I'll do my before and afters in my update videos um, regularly rather than the projects themselves this time. If you guys hate this, if you would rather I actually show the projects, then let me know and I will make the adjustments moving forward. Um, so for the October acrostic and for November and December, whatever happens for those months and maybe even into next year. So. Uh, but this is how we're going to do things this time, and we'll we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the first thing that we need to talk about is my plans for September. And in order for me to develop my plans for September, I needed to do my WIPCO draws. I haven't done a WIPCO draw with you guys in a long, long time. Uh, it's been, I think, just before the... May, June, I think. It's been a long time, um, regardless. So we need we need to do that this time so that, um, just because I know that some of y'all enjoy that. Um, so I'm going to insert here a clip in which I show you which projects came up for uh, WIPCO in uh, September and October. Okay, everybody, here we go. So I'm sure that I've already talked about this, but I am in the process of trying to figure out what I'll be working on in September and October. Uh, it is currently August 20th, um, so we have a little bit more time before I really need to do this, but I'm expecting School of Magical Stitches extra credit stuff to drop any day now. Um, and so I would like to have an idea of what's going on on top of the fact that I think I have figured out what I'm doing for September. And after we're done here, I will explain what I'm doing in September. So anyway, I need to know what my WIPCO projects are, um, what I have supposed quote unquote access to uh, in the next two months. So on the right hand, you will see my WIPCO board as it stands today. And the long story short is that I'm going to do 1 through 25. If anything that's listed here that's blacked out or grayed out, light gray, just the light gray, then I will have to redraw. If it's in white or dark gray, then I will accept that for exactly as it is. So we will uh, we'll just see how this goes. It may take a few draws. So. Bear with me for a second. All right, let's 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 do this. So I've got random generator here, one through 25, 
and we're gonna hit generate. We're gonna get number nine, so that stays. So I'm just gonna underline that as our first selection. What this means is that I have a free time in September. Um, and so I can now mark this, I can now black this out and I'm on my way towards a whip go. So, okay, let's do it again. This would be really great if this went easy. 16, I uh, have to redraw that one because give things was drawn already. 18 is a flower of the month. So that will be a September project. Okay, so now we're on to October and we're gonna get number eight, which is forever and ever. That's done. 19 is haunted house. That's already been called. 14 is Animal Piles Quartet, okay? So that will get worked on in October, maybe. October is different because dark October stitching, but we'll see. Uh, and then we have number 12, Around the World in 80 Stitches. So that works out pretty quick, like. Uh, I like that. So um, my September projects are Christmas at Winterberry Cabin, which is finished. So I'll black that out here in just a second, and Flower of the Month. Um, I am well on my way to some whip go bingos here. Yeah, it's coming. So normally speaking, I would add these projects to my calendar, but we all know that things are a little bit different in October, which is why it's blank. Uh, and September, I also have some different ideas, but this is good to have. This is some good information to have, uh, here in the, the planning process. So thank y'all for watching. I will get you back to the other video. So there we have it. Those are my whip go spins for September and October. And fortunately that went really easy. So now you can see what the options are for November and December. It's just a matter of when they come up. Um, so that's interesting. So let's talk about September and what my plans are for it. At the beginning of this week, I thought I knew and then I questioned it and I had a different idea and now I am settled on what I'm doing in September. In the month of August um, last year, Stitch and Mommy Sarah pitched the idea of Arbitrary August and it was this really cool thing where you randomly chose what you were working on um, and that sort of gave birth to the tiny decisions and, and us all using tiny decisions to choose our web spores. Uh, it was a really cool concept, and I missed out on it this year because um, I decided to go with the semi-sane stitchers events. I decided to try something else, but I really missed <laughs> the arbitrary August. Like I've, I was kind of bummed that I didn't play along. So in thinking about September, I thought maybe a spin me September would be fun. Uh, so essentially carrying that idea of arbitrary August into the month of September. That might be something. Um, and so I kind of started thinking about it and working through it. And then um, while I was in the midst of considering it, this other idea popped into my head. Last September, I was basically monogamous and I completed three pages on in this moment three um, and I don't know that's really attractive I have two pages left from my goal for the year it's really attractive the idea of just sitting down and getting three pages done maybe or two at the very at the very least I could finish my in this moment goal before the end of the year long before the end of the year so I grappled with this. I grappled with it for a long time. Finally, I was like, okay, I'm clearly not coming to a decision on my own. So I pitched it to Instagram and I posted it to my Instagram stories with a poll. And at the end of it all, um, thank you to everybody who voted, by the way. Um, at the end of it all, 62% of you said, go with spin me September. So do the, the arbitrary thing in September. And I said, okay, all right, we'll just, we'll go with that. It works out better this way, given the 24-hour acrostic, as well as extra credit. Um, and since October is dedicated to dark October stitching, it works out nicely. So 
who knows, maybe I'll go monogamous in November. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. So was I going to go true arbitrary or true spin September? The answer to that ultimately was no. Um, I have a limited list of whips this year and I have goals this year. Um, and with the whip go thing and that sort of going by the wayside, I thought a spin September would be a lot of fun. Um, but to spin with my whip go projects. So ultimately that's why I had to do the, the whip go spins that you just saw. Um, I had to get that done so that I knew which projects were going to go into my wheel. So I'm going to insert here a picture of my wheel for September. Um, and these are my WIPCO projects that I haven't reached the goal on them yet. Um, I have it also, I have it listed out here and you will see that some of these are bubbled in um, and some of them are blank. The bubbled in ones are obviously complete. So um, just a fast list here. Fantasy Sal, not quite white work. Um, Glory of Autumn, Give Thanks, Haunted House, Prairie Schooler Alphabet, Spooky Countdown, Nantucket Rose, Flowers of the Month, Around the World in 80 Stitches, and Animal Piles Quartet. Actually, those last two are October, so those are not included this month. Um, so my plan is September 1st, I'm going to spin the wheel. And whatever comes up is what I'm going to start working on. Some of these have just a couple of days left to go. Some of them have like page finish goals or finish it goals um, or things like that. I'm going to work on everything for a minimum of three days. Um, excuse me, a maximum of three days, except for Nantucket Rose. Nantucket Rose, I only need four more days of effort on it to reach my goal for the year. So um, a maximum of three days for each of these, and then I'll spin again. If three days completes the goal, cool. Uh, and so that will come off my wheel. Uh, I'm going to do non-repeating selections. And so, for instance, if Fantasy Sal comes up September 1st, I'll work on it for three days. I seriously doubt three days is going to be enough to get the goal finished. Um, and so it won't get selected again unless I get through the whole wheel again. Uh, I doubt that that's going to happen because I think there's a total of 10 here. And I have some other things that I have to work on in the month. But just in case, um, Fantasy Sal won't come up again until I complete the wheel and I have time left in the month. Hope that makes sense. So these other things that I have to work on. Um, Full Coverage Fanatics has an event um, and it's ancient, ancient something challenge. Essentially, you pulled out, pull out your oldest full coverage piece and work on it for three days. Um, and there's no stitch counts or anything like that. It's just put some time into your oldest full coverage. And for me, that's um, in this moment. So I will definitely be working on it in September. It was just a matter of whether I was working on it all month or just a few days. So it's going to get a guaranteed three days. I may try to give it a little bit more time at some point, but we'll sort of address that if and when it comes up. Um, because I do still have by the numbers that I'm trying to keep up with. So we shall see. We'll see what, what happens. So that is my overall plan for September. And that is what helped me build my plan for these other stitching events that I am participating in. So let's get into those. And the first one that we have to talk about here is the 24 hours acrostic. Excuse me. 24 hours of cross stitch across stick. <laughs> I don't know why I got twisted up there. I can't imagine. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to be inserting some pictures of uh, the projects. Um, and a, um, I think that I'm going to do finished project pictures. And then we'll do before and afters when we get there um, this month. So the acrostic for September is shorter days. Um, and so we have 11 tasks this month. I did not apply 1,200 to each of these um, because some of them are not in my spin September and some of them were coming up more than once. And I just I can't, I, I don't think that I'm going to be able to get 
2,400 stitches in some of these. So I kept it very realistic. Okay, so S, Spooky Countdown by the Primitive Hair. Spooky, starts with an S. Um, and I'm gonna do 480 for that. H, Haunted House. Um, I am going to do 1,200 for that uh, because I think I could do 1,200 and it's the only time this one comes up. So I think I could do that. Oh, Summer Sampler by Cooler Design Studio. It's the only O that I have. <laughs> it's the only one I've got. Um, and the artist behind that design is Sandy Orton. So I'm going to work on it a little bit. Um, I'm going to find some space for it, even though it's not on my Whipco board. Um, it's still one of my whips for this year. And so I put in 480 stitches because 120 is not enough. It's not enough for that. Um, okay, up next is um, R, and I chose Nantucket Rose. Um, I did not feel like working on Rose Fairy this month, and so Nantucket Rose is my choice for R, and for that I went with 480. T, temperature balloons. It was really kind of my only viable option for this, so I went with temperature balloons. Um, and I am only going to put in 120 stitches um, because it's not on my WIPGO board and it comes up twice. So minimal effort on temperature balloons this month. I'll get caught up eventually, or I won't. E is Flowers of the Month by Ellen Morstro, and for that I'm going to try to do 1,200 stitches. We have another R, and again, it's Nantucket Rose, so 480 for a total of 960 in that project, uh, which I think I could do in four days if and when it comes up. Um, for D, I went with Doreen Jones' Fantasy Sal. Um, I had a couple of options for this one, but this one could use 1,200 stitches, so that's what I put in for it. For A, I went with the Prairie School Alphabet. Uh, and 1,200 stitches for that one. For why, I struggled, <laughs> but I went with temperature balloons again at 120 stitches um, in yellow. I'm in a section that's got a lot of yellow, so I'm hoping I can get 120 out of it. Fingers crossed. Um, and then we go back to S, and that is spooky countdown again, so another 480 for a total of 960. So I've been very ambitious the last few months with my acrostic and oh, just the same as it has been for the last couple of months. I'm coming down to the end here of the month and not sure if I'm going to get the goal accomplished. So I had to take this to be a little bit more realistic. So I'm hoping that this is achievable, um, even though there are more letters here than there have been in past months. So that's the acrostic. And that's got to be done by September 30th. Should be interesting. Okay. Up next is the School of Magical Stitches extra credit for September and October. So these things can be worked on at any point in the next two months. Um, dark October stitching is coming. And some of these are not Dark October stitching and they're not on my Whipco board. So we'll see what happens with those. We'll see. Um, but anyway, uh, so the first task, okay, I'm going to set this down because I'm going to be crinkle, crinkling paper the whole time. The first task is to stitch on something related to royalty because the title of the book is Half-Blood Prince. Follow me here. I went with In This Moment. Now, the reason I did is because um, there is an art there's a piece of artwork that shows Leda and the swan. And this is a piece of Greek mythology. So essentially Zeus was really interested in this girl by the name of Leda or Leda. Um, but she was married. And so he disguised himself as a swan. And while, um, pretending to be hiding from an eagle, they hooked up while he was a swan. Um, <laughs> and um, children were the result of this union. Um, the same day, Leda had relations with her husband, and so children resulted from that union as well. 
Um, and the legend goes that she gave birth to two human babies and two eggs, and four babies resulted from it all. Uh, some of them are half godlike. Um, Greek mythology, that's what it is for you. So Leda was princess of Atolia and eventually became uh, a Spartan queen. Um, so definitely royalty there. If you look up any artwork, and please don't do this uh, if you have small eyes around who might be looking, um, <laughs> but if you look up Leda and the Swan, then you will see a nude woman uh, depicted with a swan. Sometimes they are curled up, uh, sort of wrapped up in each other, and sometimes it's pictured with the swan um, directing his attention to her flower. <laughs> I'm having a hard time talking about this. But in this moment, that's kind of what this is. Um, some people have um, looked for Lita and the swan pieces of art and stumbled upon in this moment. Because we have a nude woman and we have a swan, uh, too, in this case, um, so who knows. Um, but very interested in a flower. <laughs> so that's my stretch. That's where I'm going with this. Um, I don't have any confirmation that this is an okay way to go about it. Um, but if not, then I have an alternative. But I just thought that that would be fun. Uh, <laughs> just to, to throw in a little Greek mythology storytelling with this. So there you have it. Okay. Um, <laughs> task number two. Hopefully these won't all come with such a lengthy explanation. Task number two is to stitch on something in a collection, like a series or something with at least eight designs. Um, and... I really wish I still had forever and ever because that would have been perfect for this. Um, but I don't because I finished that. So I went with the Prairie Schooler alphabet um, because there are nine leaflets and it's a series of 27. So um, that is, that's going to work for me there. Okay, uh, task number three is to stitch on a piece from a designer whose name starts with a letter in Snape. S-N-A-P-E. Um, and it can be the first or last name for the individual designer, or it could be the first word if it was a company. So for instance, um, Cynthia Z, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, uh, is the designer behind the drawn thread. Um, so it could I could use D, C, or Z in that case. None of those fits Snape, but anyway. So I went with Not Quite White Work, and the design company there is... Northern Expressions Needlework, which the N is found in Snape. Okay, uh, task number four is to stitch on something that looks like a pygmy puff. Um, and in the July block, which I haven't finished yet, um, it features a, a fairy, I believe, uh, and there are some flowers, and one of the flowers is this little itty bitty ball of pink. So that could totally be a pygmy puff. Um, I have also thought about maybe using in this moment because the lotus itself is a pink round flower, so it could it could be a pygmy puff, maybe. Um, but I think I'm going to go with fantasy self for this one, uh, just because I think I have in this moment for another. No, I don't. I'm going to go with fantasy self because it's really obvious. Um, so there's that. Uh, the next task, stitch on something related to a spider in memory of Aragog. And I decided to go with Haunted House by Clouds Factory. In one of the lower levels of the house, there is a spider, spider, on uh, a spider web. So that's my choice for that. For the next task, stitch on something related to love or in red or pink for Harry and Jenny. Finally getting together. Uh, and so I decided to go with Flowers of the Month uh, by Ellen Morris Stroh. The next flower that I have to work on is April's Sweet Pea, which is bright pinks uh, and flowers and relationships and love. It's important stuff. Uh, okay, uh, 
Next task is to stitch on something with a potion, beaker, or a cauldron in it. And everything in me wanted to pull out Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow, and I may still do so. But I ultimately wrote down here Spooky Countdown, because the block that I'm working on featured potion bottles, and there's potion books, and um, yeah, so this, this totally works for that task. So we'll see which one I decide to go with. Um, yeah, we'll see. Okay, the next is to stitch on something related to one of the hor horcruxes um, and to explain which one. And I went with the Hope Sampler by Maura Blackburn. Y'all, I was panicking. I was freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have anything for this. I'm going to have to start something new. I'm really not feeling the new starts right now. This could be problematic. So I'm scrolling through, looking at my visual. Um, I have my 2019 whips in a visual. I'm close up on all of them. And bam, there it is. There are two crowns um, or diadems on the Hope Sampler. So hallelujah, I found one. Um, I don't have access to any of my queens, um, to my Mirabilia queens, because they're not in my 2019 whips right now. So <laughs> whoo, thrilled. Um, so that is an, another alternate for the royalty one, since there are crowns in there. I could apply that to the the royalty task, but I'd really like to just stick to the in this moment because I like that story. Um, okay, the next task: stitch on a design that starts with the letter H, B, or P. Um, so the de design itself, not designer, but the design itself. And so for this, I also went with Haunted House uh, by Klaus Factory. Starts with an H. Uh, do, do, do. Next, 500 stitches using half stitches or back stitching for the half blood prints. Um, and so this is the, uh, the, it equals 250 total stitches. So it is 500 half stitches or back stitches. Um, and so I ultimately decided to go with Glory of Autumn because I have a ton of back stitch I could do. Um, but really, more than that, a lot of the trees in the background there where I'm at on Glory of Autumn is in half stitch. So I am fairly certain I can very quickly get 500 half stitches on, on that. Um, and that is one of my not yet accomplished whip go goals. So it's likely to get spun uh, here in Spin Me September. The last task is to watch the movie um, and to post before and after stitching photos. Um, so we'll see what I do for that and when I get to that. Um, I usually don't try to watch the movie until after I've finished the book, so that'll probably be towards the end. Um, maybe in September, but probably not until October, so we'll see. So that is September and October stitching extra credit. Okay, keep on moving. One last thing to go through, and that is reading um, for book six or year six. So the first task is to read Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And so once again, I have my print copy here, all ready to go with the bookmarks stuck in the front. Um, I will be listening to the audiobook, and I'm probably going to start it first thing Sunday morning. Um, but I'll be tracking my progress with this. This one is 670 something pages. Yeah, something like that. Um, and so I am thrilled to get into this. I am least familiar with these last two books. Um, of my rereads, I am I, almost certain that I may have reread this one once, and I don't think I've reread Deathly Hollows. I think I've just read it the one time when it was first released. So um, this is... This is going to be a lot of fun to, to get into this story again and to relive everything that happens in this book. It's going to be an emotional one, but nonetheless, I'm excited about it. In addition to reading Harry Potter, School of Magical Stitches also has the alternate reading task, where in which uh, you can read something that's not Harry Potter. You can do both or neither or just one of the two. That's totally up to you. Um, and so I always plan to do both. Um, I can't say it's always successful, but there you have it. So we have four options, and you can repeat or read as many of the options as you'd like. 
um, just so long as the total equals um, 657 pages or more, um, because that's the length of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. So I have plenty of books that are more than 657 pages, but ultimately I decided to go with the repeating selection. Um, and so the two books that I'm going to read are both, they both have a prince. Um, so the first is The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Um, and the main character in this is the bastard son of the crown prince. Um, so there is definitely a prince in this. Um, and I'm curious to get into this and to see what Robin Hobb's writing is all about. So there's that. Um, and the other Prince book that I have chosen here is Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. I have talked about this book previously. This is dark fantasy, um, and it is dark on par with Game of Thrones. Um, just be forewarned that the television show Game of Thrones is not quite the, se the book series. The book series is darker. Um, and this is, this is on par with that, but... Prince of Thorns. There's obviously a prince here. Um, so curious to get into this and see what all the fuss is about. I know that I had this picked for another um, another month, but nonetheless, I'm going to try to get to it this go round. Okay, up next is the reading extra credit for the months of September and October. Um, so I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to get to each of these or even if I have a bad habit of not reaching all of my reading goals. Um, but that's what goals are for anyway, right? It's just to put them out there. Something to aspire to. All right, so I'm going to read through these. Um, the first is to read a book with a potion on the cover. And I have here A Secret History of Witches by Louisa Morgan. And those are totally potions. Totally. Even if, they're, even if they're not, they are totally potions. Uh, so I am super excited to get into this. Um, this says historical fiction. It's generational. Um, and it deals with witchcraft. And I <laughs> cannot wait. Cannot wait to get into this. Plus that deckle-edged happy. So thrilled to read that. Um, okay, up next is to read a book with a first kiss. And for that, I chose An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. Um, I talked about this in my update video um, because I just recently got this book in the mail. Um, but this is about an artist who falls in love with a prince, a fae prince. So here's another prince if I needed it. Um, and um, so I imagine that there's probably a first kiss. What do you think? I'm a bet. So, uh, young adult, maybe even new adult, but I think this is I think this is pitched as young adult uh, fantasy. So there will probably be a first kiss in there. Okay, um, up next is a book with the word vow in the title. And to be totally honest, I haven't found anything that's really striking my fancy. Um, I haven't found anything that I'm really interested in reading. There's a C.W. Gortner historical fiction. I believe it's called The Queen's Vow. Um, so I may go with that, but um, that's if I can catch it on sale, <laughs> uh, like Kindle sale or, or something like that. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if I get there. Um, if I read through all of this, then I will put in the effort to try to find a vow book. <laughs> Okay, um, next is to read a book where a main character dies. And I decided to go with The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Um, this is a critically acclaimed book. Um, this is young adult contemporary dealing with tough stuff, and that is uh, police brutality against black Americans. Um, and... The whole basis for this is the main character is in the car when her friend, a black male, is um, shot and killed by police. Um, I would consider him a main character despite the fact that this is the whole premise for the book. 
because it's the whole premise for the book. Um, the whole book deals with the the aftermath of that as well as um, how to come out of it. Uh, and I have tried to read this a couple of times and it hurts me. Um, so we shall see um, if I am successful this time. It's important stuff. It's really important stuff. And so I'm going to try really hard to read it. The hate you give. So there's that. Okay, um, up next, a book that switches from past to present throughout the whole book. And for this, I chose The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. Um, this is historical fiction, and it bounces between, I believe, 1950s and today. And, or maybe, maybe not today, but it's kind of a psychological thriller. So curious to see what that's all about. Um, next is to read a book with one of the Horcruxes in it and to list the page number and sentence. Uh, I don't know uh, about this one. Um, I'm going to have to read some other stuff and hope that one of the Horcruxes just randomly pops up. Um, but I don't have anything planned for this. Um, I think that's going to be a little bit complicated. So I will keep my eye out if I read anything beyond this humongous list on its own, um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, okay, up next is to read a book where something is hidden. And a discovery of witches. Can y'all tell I'm in the mood for some October? <laughs> uh, so, Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. Everybody loves this. Everybody has read it. I am curious. I am interested. I would like to see it. Um, or, excuse me, read it, and then maybe watch the adaptation of it. Um, in the first few lines, unearths an enchanted alchemical man manuscript. Unearths. That's something hidden. Um, so, curious to get into this. Um, this is a fairly chunky book. Uh, it's almost 600 pages on its own. So, that's going to be a good one, though. I'm excited. Uh, okay. Next is to read a book with the author's initials R.S. for the new Minister of Magic, and I can't remember who that is. Um, and I'm hoping that S.R. counts, so the inverse of R.S. If not, then I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board, but we're going to try it with Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rush. Uh, this is young adult fantasy, and honestly... I think this is like 2014. Yep, 2014. Man, I'm getting good at that. Um, I can't recall what it's about, but it's been sitting on my to. It's been sitting in my library for a long time, and so I would really like to get into it and uh, see what all the fuss is about. Because a lot of people have really enjoyed this, so excited to to read that. Okay, uh, next is to read a book with a red or green cover to represent the Harry versus Draco kind of overarching theme. Um, and it must be at least 30% red or green based on the Ten Eye Labs um, thing. Well, I didn't even have to plug this one in. I did because I was curious. Uh, it came up with 75% crimson red or something like that. Uh, so this definitely counts. Um, and this is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. Monday Charles is missing. And only Claudia seems to notice. Um, so curious about this. Uh, Tiffany D. Jackson is a contemporary young adult writer and um, she writes some hard-hitting issues. So I'm curious to see what this one is about. Okay, and the last book on the list here is to read a book where the main character collects things. And so I went with something kind of dark. Um, I went with The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison. Um, and this is a psychological thriller, um, and the main character is a man who collects women. Um, so I'll be interested to see um, how this plays out. Um, 
and I will, of course, let you guys know. Um, but yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious about all of these. I would really like to be able to tackle all of this, but I think I just showed you... Let me think. 11 books. That's a big ask um, for somebody who averages about three books this year per month. So we'll see if I get through half of it. Um, yeah, we'll see. But those are my plans. Plans are fun. I always enjoy plans. Um, so uh, I think that that's going to bring us here to the end of this video. If you have watched both my update as well as this video, go ahead and pat yourself on the back. <laughs> you are um, a committed individual and I very much appreciate you. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed what you saw here. Um, I hope that you, uh, if you were struggling with any of these tasks, that maybe maybe this helped you spark some ideas. Um, yeah, uh, so I think that that is all. And so I'm going to head off here. I have a lot of editing to do. Um, and so I will wish you all happy stitching. Um, and as always, take care. Be kind. I'll see y'all next time.